You are listening to the Legends Lingo Podcast, brought to you by CouchGuysSports.com. With your host, Al. Buddy, you were targeted six times. You caught two receptions and did nothing else. Powder. Yes, sir. And Fiesta. He hasn't done jack. They've won one cup and they made a lot of playoff attempts. But he is a snake, an oily snake. He's a crook. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Legends Lingo Podcast, episode 100, presented by Couch Guy Sports. As always, check out everything on couchguysports.com. We got blogs. We got podcasts, including this great podcast. We have everything else. We have our YouTube channel. We have our Twitch channel. Go check it out. But enough about that. Big episode tonight. Us three idiots decided that we wanted to do this for 100 episodes, so we did it. We're here. Pat on the back to us. But we didn't want to do this alone. We wanted to share the wealth. As always, I'm your host, Al. We got Powder. We got Fiesta. Boys, how the hell did we make it? Oh, my God. I I remember about two years ago, us sitting down at diner, figuring out that we're going to do this. And now, 100 episodes later, we're here. Yeah, I still don't know how it's possible. We added a third co-host way early on. His name's Fiesta. He likes to party, I think. Fiesta, what's up? Uh, what's up, Al? Yeah, I really don't know how we got here, but we're here. We're excited. Tonight's going to be great, and whatever's going to happen after is going to be awesome. Exactly. It's going to be a fun night. As you can see, we have a few guests that have come back to us from past episodes. Don't know why they wanted to do it with us three idiots, but we thank them anyway. There might be some other people coming on, so it's going to be a wild night. A little longer episode than usual, so... If you like the 45-minute episodes, get over it. It's 100 episodes. We're happy. We're here. It's almost Christmas time. But let's introduce our guest so far. First off, she's been with us a few episodes now. She's come in as a co-host when we've needed her. Nesson's own Lauren Campbell. Lauren, welcome back. How many times is this for you? Like four? Four or five, I think. I'm not really sure, but I've been around. (laughs) You have been, so we thank you. Lauren, actually going to be on a new podcast. You want to shout that out real quick? Yeah, it's called Snipe and Sally Pod. Um, I dabbled with the crew a little bit last, toward the end of last season. Um, and I'm going to be kind of joining them full time with the upcoming season. So that'll be fun. Talk some hockey, talk some Bruins. So yeah, check it out. Be fun. Love it. Well, Lauren is back with us for the 100th episode. So with us, he was with us in episode 32. Yo, yo. for Mass Live, Red Sox writer. And we'll, we'll introduce that idiot in a second. But we have Chris Catillo of Mass Live. Chris, thank you for joining us. How's everything going? How's your holiday season been? It's good. I know I know Carabas will say otherwise, but uh, for those listening at home, it's still Catillo, not Catillo. Uh, it's Ital- Italian. Uh, no, I thought you were just going on the Carabas thing, but um, it's, it's cool. But yeah, I'm glad to be here. Merry Christmas, everybody. Absolutely. And we're appreciative that you've taken the time to be with us. It's great. Before we introduce uh, the bearded guy in the middle, we got to bring in Steve Scott of Small State Big Takes. And I I don't know what your fantasy show is anymore. I I don't even know what that is. But Steve has been a co-host when we've needed him as well. Steve, what's up, bud? What's going on? This is so cool. I I just cannot even believe Chris Cotillo is in here. Dallas Braden, oh, my God. Uh, Lauren Campbell, nice to meet you. Uh, This is – I'm mind blown. I got the link in here. I had no clue this (laughs) – We got some crazy guests here. Surprise, Steve. Wow. Surprise. No, there's going to be more. There's going to be more guests that are joining us. Now, now Steve gave it away. He was with us in episode, let me see my notes right here. Episode 40. Uh, Barstool Sports, former MLB pitcher. His name's Dallas Braden. Dallas, pleasure. Pleasure as always. It's good to be back. Great to be here for the hundo piece. Chundos. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations. It's a journey. You guys should be extremely proud of what you've put together. Anytime I can join a room, whether physically or virtually with the likes of Chris Cotillo, I am beside myself. It's a true pleasure, uh, to be here with everybody. Glad to be here. I do have a bone to pick with you, but that'll be in a second. Oh yeah. that's we later. Had, No, no, no. That's going to be in like two minutes. Okay. We got, a, we got another 
another fan i'd say a favorite everyone here is a favorite but we got another favorite with us mark bertrand 98.5 the sports hub zolak and bertrand every day 10 to 2 mark welcome back the crowd here this yeah. time <laughs> it appears i know listen we had to do it big i'm not gonna lie i was a little worried that you were gonna bail but it's okay you're here Happy that you're here. Oh, what do you mean? I'm here. I, I told you I'd be here. I'm here. Yeah, oh at, what time? at 710? Jesus, Mark. Well, I just hooked this this microphone up to make it sound good. Does it sound okay? Oh, it sounds sounds perfect. Amazing. It sounds perfect. perfect. You, sound, you sound wonderful, but we're glad that you're with I, us. I was fucking around with this thing for like 10 <laughs> minutes to make sure it works right. And now I, I hopefully it sounds good and it I've does. delivered. You ha- you, you, you've shown up. That's That's half the battle right there. Just like every day, you show up. That's what we love about you. But it counts for something. It does. We're gonna have more guests coming in and out, hopefully, throughout the night. It's not gonna be your traditional episode. So typically what we've done is we've reviewed, you know, the Patriots games, but the Patriots suck, so we don't care about that. The Celtics are opening up tonight, so that's gonna be fun. Gotta represent the Celtics right here. Let's go, Celtics. But tonight, it's just gonna be just it's gonna be random. So what we're sort of going to do is everybody can sort of bring up one topic. We're going to do almost like a round table discussion. Just everybody fired in. But first Dallas, I got a bone to pick with you. Oblame. You thought that I forgot my own two year anniversary. Did, did I, did I say that? Yes. Yes, you did. When, when did I, when did I say that? Okay. Can you I provide got, I, powder? Can you help us out? He just said, get with it. I'm kind of on Dallas' side. He just what? We had to change the date. We oh, had, get I it heard... out of here. I asked you to clean it up. I asked you to clean it. Yeah, no, you have did. those he, sort he of he conflicts, it, look, I just asked you to clean it up. I, and, and then today I asked you, have you tightened it up? That's what I asked you. Yes. Yes, Dallas. It is tightened up. It's all good. Signed, sealed, delivered. Okay. It's all well and good. Because those are dates that aren't changing. I just want you to remember that much, at least, about dates that don't change. If you're not going to remember the fucking date that doesn't change, at least remember that dates do not change. Hey, so in the hey. future, should you have dates that become important to you, remember them. That's I all. did, a bit of and I remembered it. That's why we pushed back our recording one okay. day. So right. I did remember. All that's right. called a big brain play, Dallas. I got you. All right. Yeah, that's mind control, not brain control. No, it's big brain plays. That's, that's what we call them in the industry. <laughs> but... <laughs> I just had to get that out of the way. And guests, obviously, come and go as you please. Stay as long as you want. Stay as little as you want. We've had guests that have stayed for five minutes. We've had guests that have stayed the whole sh- the whole show. Mark Bertrand. All right, being th- one thank of you them. guys. We'll see you. You're welcome, Chris. <laughs> Take care. Have hey, Chris. What's up, buddy? What's up? How are you? How you been? Good. See, we're reuniting. Hey, we're reuniting you? people. This is this is a good. Exactly. Thing. Well, Chris is obviously doing great stuff with all the fundraising he's been doing all this year. So. I'm sure you guys talked to him and, uh, about that. Yeah, yeah Chris, and, do you want to? Beetle helped out too. So, Chris, do you want to talk about that. that for a sec? Just sort of what you've been doing on Twitter? Because you didn't know ask him too. about that. You didn't ask him about I that. I was getting long? there, Beetle. What the holy. fuck kind of host are you? I mean, you're Beetle, burying holy the lead. Shit, dude. Give like, me a Chris second. Would, Chris would never give bury me, that give lead. Me a second, holy shit. You know what? Someone Chris is Chris please. Chris is a smart guy. Chris is a smart guy. He would never bury a lead like that. Unbelievable. You know, you know. Hey, how about you let him talk, Beetle? I mean, sheesh. My apologies. Yeah, Chris, I want to hear about this. Unlike Beetle, who likes to. No, you don't. You weren't even gonna fucking ask him. I was just about to ask him. What are you talking about? (laughs) All right, basics. uh, During quarantine, back in the spring, um, I was bored. There's no baseball to cover, and uh, for the Mexican Times or Mass Live, wherever I call home these days. And we'll, uh, we'll say we'll say it's mass live. It's mass. Live. All right, good. My, the people who pay me would appreciate that for once. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was basically, you know, sitting at home and had a bunch of autographs and memorabilia and stuff here. And I, my first thought was, oh well, I'm here back at my parents' house, which I am now for Christmas. Uh, I should just put all this stuff on eBay and make some money. And then I realized, actually, let's see if I could do it for charity and maybe auction some stuff off. So um, from there, there was a big spring campaign. A lot of people bid on stuff donated to a lot of charities a lot of people like beetle donated some of their own items and uh back then we were able to do fifty-seven thousand. and then i decided you know not much going on the last couple of weeks to try it again and we just hit 10k for this uh this stretch so yeah. it's uh it's been crazy it's been cool to see all the people on twitter come together a lot of you know really cool items we had a brady ball last night 
Um, Nolan Ryan signed baseball up tonight. So uh, a lot of cool shit. People have been obviously donating a lot. So never thought it would get to that point or be something that comes back over and over, but happy to uh, at least have gotten the ball rolling on it. Nice pun right there. Good job. But seriously, it's yeah. awesome what you've been doing. I- I've seen it. It's been incredible. Didn't you have something from Bob Sosi also like yeah, in the past couple Bob- of days? Yeah, he, he donated uh, a Flutie sign ball and a Brady sign ball that went for, I think it was 1200 for the two of them yesterday. So, um, yeah, people are have been super generous. And it's kind of it's been really, like I said, just cool to have people reach out with stuff to donate, people wanting to bet on stuff. And I think we've hit probably 50 different charities at this point in some way, you know, small donations, big donations. So um, if there's a market for it, why not keep it rolling, you know? This is very true. I, I would keep it going even after Christmas and stuff. I think it's great what you've been doing. So, Props to you. We have a debut here, though. Mike Gilligan, verbally committed, small state, big takes. Gilly, I think you're harder to get a hold of than some of the people in this room. Oh, please. It, I don't it, know about it, 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 it took you 100 episodes to come on here when you're a text away. Bro, I'll see you at 200. Let's just say that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 you're, you, no, no. I can already confirm. This is the last time we're going to hear from you. So anybody that listens, <laughs> go get verbally committed, small state, big takes, likes, uh, subscriptions, all that stuff. Go no, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. No, of Congrats course. on 100. Thank you. We appreciate it. Like we said, there's going to be guests rolling in. So this is what we're going to do. I actually want to start with Beetle because Beetle's not going to be on with us very long. He has another ob- obligation. Props to you. You're, you're a charity man. You're a great man. A working guy. What can I say? You are. You're a working man. You are, but you take time for the little people like us. We appreciate it. I can't believe you've gotten through a hundred podcasts already, by the way. And I, I don't mean that like, I'm not saying that to be like, you know, a wise ass. No, no, that, no. That, that's a hundred podcasts. That's not, it's not a small number. How many no. a week are you doing? One a week. Four. One a week. So one a week for a hundred weeks, pretty much. Yeah. That's, I got to say, it's pretty good. And all, all sincerity. That's Thank really you. good. Good Thank for you. you. Thank you. We appreciate it. I, th- I think we were listening to 98.5 and you might've given us a few indirect shout outs that we noticed a little manscaped in there. I don't know if you can confirm or deny, but. Well, you don't want to nick your balls, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to get to, we're going to get to that later, but beetle, we just throw, we want you to sort of come up with a question for all of us to sort of dive in on. It could be Patriots, whatever you sort of want. It's a, it's an open forum tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about Mike Reese's question to Belichick this morning. <laughs> because uh, I know that Mike tweeted a bunch about it with people who are tweeting him this morning. And he said, you know, there's some sort of uh, there's some sort of line there. There's some sort of debate about, you know, how far he's supposed to push versus Belichick's answer. I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. I thought it was probably the most interesting thing today because Cam himself and the team itself is not all that interesting right now. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Dallas, you want to throw in any Patriots opinions? I know you're a West Coast guy, uh, but no, I, I would, I would, I'm, I'm very curious to this because for the first time without Brady at the helm, you're going home. You, February is a you, go ahead, plan a vacation, get you a ski resort on your docket, and and get comfy because you ain't playing football. And I wonder how the Patriots fan base has reconciled that as much as you want to be in love with Bill Belichick and the process, when you don't have that glaring piece that is clearly gone, you're looking around now, how do you feel about it now? Are you comfortable with what the future looks like now? Is Bill Belichick now the asshole that he wasn't because he was winning? Is that something that's ever going to be like, because I I, I saw an exchange with Lou Merloni, a good friend of mine, Lou Merloni, and him asking questions and trying to give Bill Belichick every opportunity. And look, the questions are what they are because the state of the team is what it is. The questions around the quarterback position are what they are. You haven't had the performance you thought you were going to get or you would hope to have captured in that bottle. And you're talking about running out water boys now to get snaps with the first team. And those are questions that need answers. And for the dude who's been able to just basically pimp slap the media, because he's got banners, well, that's not the case now. So now right. we're going to need some answers. How does the media handle that? How is the fan base going to handle that? So as a voyeur on the West Coast, that's what I'm interested in. I'm just watching I, It's because it is. It's just like dogs eating each other now. Right. So so real quick, I'm just going to fire my, like, 10-second opinion. Answer the questions, Bill. You have, you have a situation now. You can either start Cam the last two weeks and just finish it out, 
or see what Stidham has and give him a start or two. And you got the Bills who are good, the Jets who are bad. Two good sample pieces right there. Well, and so, how is it not? Yeah, that, that would be my question as well. Is how is if if Bill Belichick is the guy that you are siding with in terms of a Patriots fan being okay? Oh, Brady, that's fine. I'm not worried about Brady being gone. Whatever. Tampa can fucking have Brady. Give us Bill. Bill's the guy. Bill's the one who's making the move. <laughs> if that's if that's what we're rolling with, then how are you looking at Bill Belichick right now? Going, yeah, man, I'm totally on board with him not giving another dude some looks just giving himself another feel it's like an octopus being willing to cut off one of those arms you're born with eight why not use all of them give yourself a feel bill dallas you've been hanging out with jared too much i'm just gonna say that you've been hanging out with jared i I, I utilize common sense i utilize Uh, common sense that's not true all right so So, open floor to anybody well i was just gonna say to that point like dallas you're onto something because if you're not upset with bill belichick for not starting, you know, if you're upset with him for, for not going to somebody else or going to Jared Stidham, the backup, if, if you don't want to be upset with him, that's fine. You could say, Hey, you know, he's sticking with cam and maybe there's nothing there with Stidham. If that's what you're telling yourself that Stidham is not that good. You know, he was like the, you know, the late middle round pick. And I think they took like six other guys before they took him in that draft. So if that's what you're going with that, okay, he's not any good either. Well, then you have to be upset with the GM, Bill Belichick. Maybe not the coach, Bill Belichick. Sure. But the GM, he's also the guy who, you know, picks the groceries to borrow the Bill Parcells line. And and, and I'll say this. This is coming from a Dallas Cowboy fan who watches that situation (laughs) play out, okay? Like, I'm I'm watching the dude who's hiring the popcorn vendor, who's hiring everybody in the building. Uh, He's hiring the players. He's signing the checks. He's hiring everybody. I'm watching how that plays out. So I know exactly how that feels. Yeah. So, I mean, there's something to be upset about there. It's just a matter of picking what it is you want to be upset about. Yeah. It's just the reason I have, uh, the reason I'm curious again is because Belichick, there's no questioning what the man has done in the game. I'm just curious to see how the fans react to what's, to what's transpiring. Go ahead. You look like you want to say something. I think that this has not been a very good season for Bill Belichick. Like literally everything that went wrong, went wrong. And some, besides the COVID thing, I mean, Cam not performing, kind of showing that he's actually washed up and a couple of other things. It just, it hasn't worked out. I think I have a feeling that this is going to be a weird off season because they have to get a quarterback. They have to find the guy. They have to find somebody that's going to, bringing them to the playoffs again, not, not necessarily a Super Bowl, but just to the playoffs again. And I, I think it could get a little ugly because if the people upstairs from Bill say, Oh yeah, it's time. We gave you a year to figure something out and it didn't work out. You could kind of see that dynamic working out again. So that's where I think it could get a little ugly. Oh a little snippy, so. boy, here we go. Now we got the Rocky. <laughs> here. Oh, yes. Jared Carabas, Barstool Sports. He has joined us. Jared, what's up, man? Is that Mark the Beetle Bertrand? You know it is, baby. Oh, my God. Those, <laughs> I, miss, those vocal I miss your cords, musk. I, mean, I miss like, your musk, Those baby. vocal cords just, like, make you feel something, like, down deep. Like, Mark Bertrand is, like, the David Allen Boucher of our generation. That's that's actually a fact. I I, and, and I, I could a spin a couple of songs for you, Jared. <laughs> yeah, I can. You can you two take this love? Can you two take this love fest somewhere else? Because we're, we're trying. I did to- this the other day. I actually yeah. did one of these the other day on the air, and I said, "Oh, oh play Celine Dion, my <laughs> heart will go on." All right. Well, well Jared, I got a bone to pick to with you, but that's going to be later tonight. on. But let's let's uh let's carry on here a little bit. You have bit. a bone to pick with me? I do, I do. I picked the bone that? with. Oh, you'll you'll see. I picked the bone with with Dallas. And then he got buried in the hole that he dug. Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) Let me tell you right now, Alan, uh, if you went after Dallas, I don't have to be here to let you know you probably lost. (laughs) No, that's not the case. You didn't even hear the argument yet. I don't have to. I don't like I've I've worked with Dallas for four years now, and uh, I I haven't I've, I've got a lot of ties. I don't know if I have any wins. Well, that's, that's just not nice. That's, that's yeah. just, that's just hurtful. You, mm. you, that's just hurtful. But anyways, Patriots, anybody else want to throw in sort of a take on, uh, on Beatles question at all, because you missed my dynamic breakdown, Jared, of a, he, he, he had a good one. Franchise. It was pretty good. It was pretty good for a non-Patriots fan. 
Huh. I, I, I mean, so. Dallas is a is a Cowboys fan, which is <laughs> kind um, of. <laughs> you know, I didn't really see that coming. We don't, but... we don't need to talk about that. Yeah. yeah I mean, if your if your name was New England, you'd be a Patriots fan too. That's isn't that how it works? <laughs> I, 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 I I didn't have many options, Catillo. Yeah. I didn't have many options. <laughs> Small, small state guys, Lauren, anybody else want to jump in? Powder, jump in. Yeah, I mean, I really, I had no issues with Mike Reese and like how he asked the questions or, or whatever, just because Mike Reese is one of the best in the business. He's a dog at what he does and he's not afraid to push Belichick, even though we probably all know what kind of answer we're going to get, but he's always just pushing and pushing and pushing. So I love that from him. Um, and then as for Belichick, like we need to get rid of Belichick GM because where he excels, is coaching we've all we know that we've seen that for so long now he needs help and it can't be it can't be his kid it can't be him and he needs somebody in that gm position to kind of get things back on track maybe but he can't be gm he can't be coach it just it doesn't it's not working yeah it's yeah it hasn't been great for us patriots fans this year but this oh, is the I think it's, 20 years i think his biggest problem is that he has final say and he doesn't let mm-hmm maybe enough people push back on him. Right. This is true. Like his, his job as GM is not typical of what a normal GM is doing. He's got a full scouting staff and he's got Nick Casario and he's got people that do a lot of the like legwork. And then he makes the final call. So, you know, maybe that's part of like the issue is are, are other people in that room having their voices heard the way that they should when you have him, you know, basically making the final call. If Nick, I, I brought this point up the other day on the air. I said, if Nick Casario says draft this guy and Bill says, no, I want to draft this guy who wins. It's Bill every single time. Of course. And, and there had to have been times in their careers where Nick Casario or another guy from the coaching staff wanted to draft one player and Bill just overruled them and took somebody else and he was dead wrong. But what are those other guys going to do? It's not like they have any recourse. You know, oh, we got overruled. And there's been sort of these rumors and stories about that over the years where guys go and scout a player and they do the report. But because Bill has a relationship with a college coach and he went and saw the kid practice for a day at a pro day, it was like, no, that's who Bill fell in love with. And that's who Bill drafted. And I think that may have been the case with Nikhil Harry. You know, he fell in love with Nikhil Harry. Did the scouting department want to draft him? I think that's a relevant question right now that we're never going to get the answer to, but I'd love to know. Oh, sorry. I thought we lost. Yeah, we lost somebody. I don't know who we lost, but Steve, we'll fi- he, he, has to, he has to go do trivia. Ah, well, he's, you know, he's Steve Scott, but thanks Steve Scott for dropping by. You're the man. And Beetle, I'm not going to lie. I was listening to you, but then I saw Jared in the corner laughing yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I'm wondering what the hell is going on here. I'm guessing Dallas is texting him something. That's like, no. probably you're, you're so full of it. No, I, you're so full of it. Uh, just we, we, I think I think uh, I think what the crowd wants is is for for Al to start hashing it out. I mean, we need your zero and one early, Al. Yeah. I would like for you to give one the and fans <laughs> one and zero, one and zero. Andy's one bad enough. I mean, for the sake one. of the program, I think just we need to hash this out. Come on, Al. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well hold on first things first dallas i'm a math teacher so i know how to do math i'm one to oh. know let's get that right oh. that's, number one. Wow. that's number one that's number one second of all it's all it is was i texted you a few weeks ago i'm like hey 100th episode you coming on powder shoots you a text and you get back to him right away so i'm thinking to myself what did i do to piss off this guy I don't know what it was. But. I just don't answer. Te- I mean, I don't answer text messages. Ask Dallas. I mean, that's like it. Dallas is, is. Yeah. Like if you look at like true. the starting nine group text, like I don't think that's I'm, true. I'm in there. Oh, oh. Go ahead. I mean, like Beetle texts me once a year. So if I see his name pop up, I'm like, oh, shit, Beetle. But like over the course of like a, if you text me during a work day, like I'm probably going to be like doing something. Look at it and be like, yeah, I'll get to that. And then I just don't. In my defense, there was one time where I got lucky. I shot you a text, and we had about a 45-minute conversation. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I got lucky. Sometimes got lucky. I'm great. Sometimes I'm not. I mean, I'm very hit or miss on the text machine. This, this is I got, very I fair. got one back in, like, 30 seconds today. Big. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I wasn't working, though. I was, That's funny moves. I was driving. I did. Way, I did. Am I the only one? Cotilla, did you get the good morning text as well? I mm-hmm. got that. Fuck no. Oh, did oh, I text wow. you good morning today, Dallas? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> well, Jared, we also need to have our round of uh, rocket, paper, scissors, because I remember we had a little bet going on. What was the bet? Uh, if I won, you had to get me a guest of my choice. If you won, 
I bought either fifty or a hundred dollars worth of whatever merch you want from Barstool. I mean that that does nothing for me. I just I, I mean just, this, I mean, this it's chain actually, around it's my neck, ten grand just donated five hey, grand to the Barstool fund. Is it not actually I'm, commission? I'm, no, I don't. I don't. I don't need that. Uh, no, I need wow. something. Five grand. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fair enough. I'll tell yeah, you I don't what, need you, fuck. You I can, guess uh, I guess Patriots came around on those contracts, huh? I mean, hey, baby, I'm I'm at the end of my deal. I'm in my I'm in my contract year right now. So <laughs> free agency. Oh. Yeah. Free I'll agency. tell you. I'll tell you what. You name the terms then if you win. I'll let you. Do um, it. I'll have to think of it. Uh, that, that means we're not going to hear from him for another year. That's okay. I mean, uh, hey, if if you build it up, then it becomes a bigger deal, and then the stakes are much higher. So uh, maybe you go through also- powder. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jared, you want an agent? I got, I got Dallas and Jared, so you did. That's true. Yes, that's you did. Producers produce. Like that's that's what we do here. Fact, except only. except he's not he's not a producer. He's, a, he's well, just, he is he's now. He just landed you two of the biggest guests in in digital media today. Uh, Man, we'll oh well. Uh, Dallas. No, Lauren. Lauren is also here. Lauren and I kind of go way back. We've we've done podcasting with Jared Scally like way back. Way back, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I do the podcast with them too. Him yeah. and Nicolia. We do that it was like twenty fourteen. We were should just I, babies. Yeah. Should I get should I get Jared Scally on here too? Yeah, go ahead. Didn't right. he just have a kid? Didn't he he just had like some sort of like major life thing happen? He's got a kid? Yes, yeah. Jared yeah. Scally God, has his... he was our intern like five minutes ago, it feels like. Yeah. Call got a kid Scally. now? All right. Hey, I'm leaving, guys. I got to go do another thing. All right. Bye, Beetle, thank you for joining Beetle. us. Beetle. Good to see Beetle. you guys. Bye, Beetle. Congrats on the 100, man. That's that's no small feat. You guys should be proud of that. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate thank it. All right. we'll, have, we'll have to have you back on soon. Please do. Jared, I'll text you, buddy. See Please, ya. Do. Please do. Please <laughs> do. <laughs> see um, you guys. So we are in the middle of recording episode 100, and you are being asked about Yes, by Jared Carabas, uh, Chris Cotillo, Mark Bertrand. They're all asking about you right now. They just want to know how you're doing. They can't believe that you're the father of a kid. So, <laughs> of a kid. Yeah, they're all on. Literally, I'm looking at it right now. We got Powder, Fiesta, Lauren Campbell, Dallas Braden, Chris Cotillo, Mike Gilligan, and Jared Carabas all on this call. And now you're on the call. So thanks for uh, contributing to episode 100, buddy. I'm glad I can. Yeah, well, you didn't do much, but that's okay. Anyways, um, any takes you want to throw out there? Carson Wentz, man. Carson, Carson okay. Wentz, am I right? Bye. Goodbye. Ugh. Okay, so that was Jared Scally. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, we're not going through the Carson Wentz straight. We're not going through that. But anyway, we're going to move on because like the Patriots just drive me friggin' nuts. I, I, can't, I can't take the Patriots anymore. Dallas, you're the only uh, non-New England person here. Why don't you give us a topic? Anything you want. He's about Ooh. to be. Uh, how many um, how many bachelor bachelorette nation fans do we have here? Mm. My girlfriend's a huge fan. I watched it with her hey. last night. Humble nobody, nobody else. So nobody on the panel. Uh, bachelor- J- I'm Jared, a season, season guy. I dabble. Okay, yeah, a little bit too. What is this? A little bit. You're either in or you're out. You're not like catching one episode. You're not catching every I, other episode. Honestly, I kind of. I don't know. Like I, I get the vibe. Like Tasha, I big fan of Tasha. Um, Claire, not a big fan, so she no. kind of lost me. Oh, um, oh. so I don't know. I, I, I dip in and out. It's it, to be honest, it all depends on the girl I'm dating at the time. If she's Fair into enough. it, I'm watching. Yeah. If she's Fair not, enough. then I dip what, out. What do you but, think in Dallas? What what's you the thinking? question? Yeah, what's the what's the question here? Oh, I, I don't. I mean, I just feel like that was a that's that's a topic that can be discussed. I, I don't. If we don't watch it, because what what has just transpired? I don't want to break any. You know. It, has anybody recorded it? Not watched the episode. You know what I mean? Is there going to be a spoiler alert possibility here? Wait. I don't. I don't want to do that. But if you watch the last episode, the last yeah. two episodes, there's there's been some there's been some developments here, and uh, obviously the last episode is what it is. Um, so we we we've seen it come to an end. She chose her boy. Uh, I I just I thought it was going to end very differently. I didn't have her picking anybody. I didn't have her picking anybody. Yeah, that Am was. Am I the only so, one? No, so Ivan got screwed. By the way, just saying, he, he got bamboozled. Did he not? He got. I mean, how about the shit date he gets? Like, uh, like, like homeboy is bouncing off a fucking bed in a penthouse. They're, they're having a great time, and he is 
like stuck in this like silver stream or airstream trailer, like just a bad, like Uncle Eddie Christmas vacation setup, like not great. Uh, yeah, I feel like he got hosed. Yeah, he did. And honestly, Ben coming back, That's that was so a mistake. So that was a mistake. And Zach C looks like the dad on Phil the Future. Like I saw a tweet on it. I saw a tweet and it showed the picture of the dad. I'm like, I can't unsee it now. Show me where it's wrong. Oh man, like, that is so it, good. It was that it was something. My girlfriend was like, Yeah, just watch it with me. I'm like, all right, fine. So then I watch it. I'm like, oh. See, I'm a day one. Kind of I've been I've been I've been watching day this one? For, Yeah, I've been I've been watching this forever. It's good, it's good high quality content. Yeah, Tasha's up is. there, wouldn't you say, in terms of Bachelorettes? She's, she brought it. She was. Oh yeah, and I, especially I really in such a, especially in a sixty-game season for her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's <laughs> that's that's what it was. It was a sixty-game season for Tasha. It yeah. was a shortened season. Um, in a bubble, um, she yeah. she she performed at a, at a high level the entire time. Yeah, she had yeah. to deal with some fuckery as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, God, oh, what's the what's the uh. I, I'm terrible with names. What's the Harvard D bag's name? Um, uh, you know I, I, I think I do. Brendan. Maybe? Is it Brendan? No, it's not Brendan. Brendan was the last dude who, okay. who, who, okay. who told her like, yo, I'm out. I got to go. I can't do this. Okay. I, I have no idea, but I want to get into bachelor and bachelorette more. Cause it's actually like very entertaining. It is. Like, it's, it, it, it is. It's a, it's a good two hour chunk out of your Monday or Tuesday or whatever the hell it is. Tuesdays. Just, this, this is true. Now, Tuesday for us is podcast day, but after podcasts, maybe if my eyes can, you know, stay up. But anyways, uh, Jared, mm-hmm. you want to come up with a question for us to make up for it? I'm sorry. That was mean of me. I was do I mean. Wanna, do I want to come apologize. up with a question? Just something that we can discuss. You're, you're the one that's usually coming up with the content. Now you can just ask something and just relax and let everybody else throw the opinions out there and shit all over those opinions. Yeah. Why, why is Chris Cotillo here? Well, you I've, see, I've been asking myself the same question. Well, if you want me to, wow, it's not, it's not even like fabricated. He really, okay. Um, so we, we just threw out a bunch of invitations and Chris mm-hmm. was the first one to just be like, Hey, would love to help you out. Thanks. Yeah. But no, he was, no, Chris was nice enough to donate his time just like you are and Lauren and Dallas and Beetle and everybody else. So he's on here. We're just, have you we're guys just, have you guys done an episode with Dallas yet? Like, or is this yeah. your first experience with Dallas? Yes, yes, we have. We you have. Yes, How yes. That, that that was uh, that. What types of questions did you ask him? Uh, what did we ask? I think we talked a little bit about what he likes besides baseball, which I think, <laughs> he, I think he said. I think he said hunting. He's I think a was, he's a damn beekeeper. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah actually, true. I just this is true. Uh, this is true. I just ordered another nuke today. I don't know what that means. Fact. In B terms, what does that mean? Uh, that is another queen uh, accompanied by another 15,000 uh, bees. So, so you have two queen bees? Like, doesn't, like, are you going to create, like, a gang war type situation where it's uh, like that, there will only be one queen? That could. There is potential for that to rise. There is a, uh, there is a phenomenon that is known as robbing. It's not necessarily a phenomenon. It's more like an occurrence, mm-hmm. uh, but two hives, if That's they phenomenal uh, to exist in close proximity, mm-hmm. one could absolutely rob the other of its, of its honey, kill off the queen. Like there's a lot of crazy stuff that could go on there, wow. but uh, like, I'm going to have one on the East side, one on the West side. This is so. true. So, so yes, you're creating gang activity with bees. <laughs> I mean, Actually- national geographic type shit, Jared, you we, we actually we were we were recording one day and uh right outside my window like i can i can see the hillside and there was a uh a rabbit i think rabbit or a squirrel i think it was rabbit and this hawk above is circling <whistles> screaming and i'm looking out and i'm looking down looking out looking down and like as we're recording this this hawk comes down and just snatches this rabbit <whistles> And flies off, and like I just lost my shit in the middle of us recording. Does uh, that make you? Does that make you sad, or does it? Are you excited, or how, what's extremely the... excited? Mm-hmm. Extremely excited. Yeah. Th- this has turned into starting nine two point oh, but mm-hmm. all right, I- I'm liking it. Uh, what was I gonna ask? Oh, Jared, I was actually gonna ask you a serious question now. Yeah, yeah. How did now? Forgive me for this. How did the Mexican Times with Chris Cotillo come up? Like, how did that start? <laughs> 
Like that's a hundred percent. That's a great question. Um, I actually like want to know. Yeah, I, mean, I like, do he, too. He got a job <laughs> there. Like a few no, years no, ago. no, no. Like for real. Like we for real. Like how yeah. did it start? He got a job there, and we like I knew him from back in twenty thirteen. He, he he applied and he had his interview, and then they hired him. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I've known Chris since 2013, and then obviously he graduated from uh, Duke, was it? And then he, yeah, after graduating uh, mm-hmm. from Duke, he, um, he got a job in media at the Mexican Times, and you know it was courageous of him to be like, hey, like I really want to work in this industry, but like I'm willing to leave the country to do it, uh, to get that byline, to get that ink under my fingernails, and so he did, and I was like, you know what? I'd like to, you know, at least have you involved in some sort of media in the United States. And then he started being a recurring guest on, on section 10, albeit being a reporter for the Mexican times. Section D8. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, yeah. my goodness. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I walked myself into that one. That's fair enough. All right. All right. Anybody else? Any, there's, somebody I mean, else? There's, there's, there's never a good answer for it. I don't know what the answer is either. I mean, I've never I, I was trying to, I was trying to help you, Chris. Been, I, I, I was yeah, trying I to give you some clarity, it. you know? It's, I feel like I answered the question pretty thoroughly. I, I mean, have a complete was, total understanding. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like know. for Dallas being someone that like doesn't or hadn't known what the answer to the question was, he, is pretty informed at the moment. I get it. Chris was on the beat in a foreign country, and Jared mm-hmm. was nice enough mm-hmm. to bring him into the fold stateside. Right. Right. And now look at his situation. Right. Uh, yeah. My goodness. He's flourishing. International brand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, right. You know what I mean? It's kind. Of, I. He's an international. Thank you, superstar. Jared. I owe you actually. When you, once you think about it for a second. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, like, that's, I, that's, I didn't want to say it. Yeah. I didn't want to say it. I wasn't that, waiting for it, but uh, this is cut say, off the rails. Yeah, I mean, Al, Al, you're the math guy. How did you not put all that together and realize <laughs> that the Catillo is absolutely in, indebted to, to section 510? <laughs> you know what it, you know dallas I, sh- I should clarify something this is middle school math we're talking we're not talking that high school college level math like i i can't do that i'm talking to a guy who can too. only get to 20 if i'm barefoot al that's the only, <laughs> right, okay. that's the only uh, way you know you know what i appreciate appreciate about you dallas you're very honest with yourself not a lot of people can say that. <laughs> i appreciate it. no don't don't start no uh, no I don't know if that's true i'm not quite <laughs> sure about that uh, would you like to interject then, Mr. Carabas? No. Okay, fair enough. Hey, I just asked. I was just asking. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to say anything. So. No, I don't have. I don't have. Uh, I don't have anything to add to that. Totally fine. Don't even worry about it. All right, Fee, you want to talk about some hockey real quick? So, floor is yours, good sir. I mean, we can. I mean, we could talk baseball. We have two of the most pro- predominant baseball people on this podcast. Let's talk some baseball. Oh, yeah, we can, I, agree. No, I know you wanted to talk hockey, so I wanted to give you your. No, no, let's talk baseball. It's fine. Thanks. All right, fair enough. All right, baseball. The Red Sox aren't doing shit. Okay, we're moving on. All right, hey, sweet. congrats! No, they, uh, you guys, uh, they won Matt the Andres. the Andre sweepstakes. So congratulations. Uh, he's a good guy. Yeah, like nodding him. Yeah, he 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 won the press conference today. He did. What do no, you say? Nothing. That was nothing how, worth writing. That's how you win. How it. difficult is it for you, like? as a bilingual reporter when like when there are guys that are like not speaking your first language, but you have to kind of write it in both nice. languages because you know that you have fans back stateside because of section 10, but you're also reporting for the Mexican times and most of the players are speaking English, but some of them speak Spanish. So, like, do you ever get confused? I'm not even going to entertain that stupid question. I mean, like I it's okay. So you're now you're getting cocky being like, I'm not going to even entertain that. Like, of course it's, it's easy for me because I'm so well-versed in English and Spanish, but like I'm asking for an expanded answer. Like has there ever been a time where maybe you got mixed up? No, I think there's, there are times where it could be useful to have like the reverse interpreter in the clubhouse, you know? So you're kind of like angling for a job here. Yeah. I mean, Look, it's a tough economy. All right, it so is. here, so here, I got a question for everybody. We're all baseball people here. We all love the game of baseball. Played it at some level. So here's my question. Some level. <laughs> I mean, we did. Did you played high school, right? I played in the 16 to 18 league until I was 22. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that takes a grinder. That, that does. Stop. That, that, that does. Stop. 
Not many I'm people not. can do that. Who I, do you know, I, I, do you I, know I that's done that? I can't, I can't say anything, especially to him, because we're from the same hometown. We played it's at the durability. same high school. It's called I know. Durability. I know the deal. Right. He's a compiler. Mm-hmm. Don't knock him for it. I'm yeah. not. I, hey, listen. I, listen. Everybody. Hey, when is Saugus going to be next, like Fenway Park being um, canceled? When is Saugus uh, next? Aren't they at the Sachems or something stupid uh, like that? Oh, uh, no, don't get started. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't get started. Sachems please. is not offensive. Yeah. I'm not offended by it. I'm not either. So at least we can agree on that. We'll yeah, I'm like two percent Native American, so I can say if it's offensive or not. And I'm personally not offended by the word Sachem. All right. So, so, so here's here's my question to everybody: One team in the MLB you think is going to surprise people this year in a good way? And one team that you think is going to perform below expectations. So basically one sleeper and one like dud in a sense. I mean, the A's are kind of a dud. So it, whoever, whoever wants it, shout out. This is for everybody. Cause mm. I, I'm interested. I think, the, I mean, I think Toronto is probably going to be better than the Red Sox. Is that even a hot take anymore? Or? No, I no. think it's, a, it's an idiotic take is what you just said. Chris, I think that's a great take. Is it though? It's December 23rd. You really can't say who's going to be good or who's not going to be good. Well, well then let's just say we all ignore the question then at that point. All right. All right. right. Let's ignore the question. Sweet. Next question. Somebody else else come up with a question. It's your show. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not the only one that has some questions. Jerry, what was your answer going to be to that question? A sleeper team? Mm. Like the New York Yankees? Like they fucking stink. And I feel like they might have a chance to finish over 500 next year. Like they've got like a pretty good roster that like not a lot of people are talking about. Um, I think they got a shot. I think they got a shot to at least have a winning record next year. Okay. Anybody else want to throw in? Because I do have another question. If Jared will actually let me ask it. I I've never been afraid of a question in my life. You think I'm afraid of a question? Uh, you might be. I don't know. All right, I'd love to. I'd love to answer any questions that you may have, Al. You throw me that question, it's getting answered. Well, you get a satisfactory answer. Well, I mean, by the smirk on your face and by Dallas's comment, I don't know how true that is, a hundred percent of the time. But we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Does anybody want to answer the previous question before I go on to the next one? I feel like those divisions are. I, I feel like we're seeing a large separation in class in baseball. To be totally honest, and okay. in terms of like. Like I, I tweeted earlier today about the move with Tommy Canley for the Dodgers. Like the Dodgers are the Dodgers are looking at 2022. You know what I mean? Like that's I, and and obviously I say that tongue in cheek, but that's sort of the position of strength they're dealing with. So like who's gonna surprise me out of those teams? Well, I think I think in that division, is it crazy to say that the Padres again would be a surprise if they actually do compete over the course of 162 right you know because because we're excited like jared and i have talked about this about how the padres have been you know they've they've been able to stand their ground they've been able to throw those counter punches and it didn't look like it was a complete boat race because of the 60 game season how does that play out when you double the length of the season right and again because of the additions that the Padres have made, they're also sort of aiming for 2022. We don't know where Bauer's going to end up, but 2022 has a, a rotation that looks pretty good if they do go out and get a piece that can help them. So if they can compete in that division, are they a surprise? Yeah, a lot of people think that the San Francisco Giants are going to quietly make noise. That's mm. at least the the the... The thought the out scuttlebutt the, out west, yeah, on the west coast. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've heard that. I've I, heard the west coast scuttlebutt as of today. <laughs> and I, I, but again, is that going to be enough to compete with the Dodgers? Ah, so I, so uh, it's 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 tough because I do think that there is, you know, um, I mean one one of the divisions, a division that I obviously follow very closely, the AL West, is a division that is potentially up for grabs, just because of the free agents that have hit both teams. The injuries that have hit, so that that's a division that doesn't necessarily have a definitive winner, definitive horse to lead the pack right now. Um, there's there's a like the White Sox. Oh boy, you're, 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 you're gonna give White Sox Dave some credit here for his team. 
Well, there's no, there's no denying what the White Sox That's have true. done and are continuing to try to do. If they could shore up the back end of the bullpen a little more, that's kind of what, what came to bite them. Um, okay. You know? Okay. They, so there, there, there's a lot, but there's, there's a lot of that, I think. Uh, so, so any, any team that gets out to a big lead and could sustain it, I think that will be the surprise. Outer, Fee, Lauren, Gilly, anybody? No, I just I was going to say the Padres when it comes to the NOS, I think they're going to make it close, but if they don't get another pitcher, I don't, that might be tough for them without having Clevenger and um, everything. But if they can somehow get Bauer, which I agree with Dallas, I think Bauer is going to end up in San Diego. Then I think they can really compete with the Dodgers, but without a Bauer or someone like that, they definitely can't. Um, Darvish, right? That. There's the Mets. I, I'm interested to see what they do this offseason and heading into the season. That that I think is going to be the most interesting dynamic. If the Mets are good, I mean, New York will be buzzing because the rivalry, the, the talk of the town in baseball. So that's where I, I see it. There's going to be a vibe. There's going to be a vibe that like uh, New, New York just, just completely changes if the Mets have success and the mm-hmm. Yankees do not and the because now because now you have that vibe like oh shit are we winning because we have good players do we have good players because who our owner is is this how things are gonna be can we expect this like did we just seriously turn into a viable franchise is my nightmare fandom over okay before we get into the next question though i have a question for let's see who do i pick on here uh dallas i'll pick on you Holla. Do you make sure that you're taken care of? I always make sure I'm taken care of. This is like the start of an ad read or something. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, fellas. 2020 has indeed <laughs> stunk. It's almost a new year, which means new balls with our sponsor at Manscaped. Yes, the Legends uh, of the Podcast mm-hmm. is sponsored by Manscaped, as Jared Carabas foreshadowed. Thanks, Jared. Mm-hmm. Uh, Manscaped is the best in men's below the belt grooming or below the waist, whichever you want to call it. Below the waist grooming, which offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels and helps 2 million men or women worldwide get rid of hair down there. Jared, let me ask you a quick question. Yeah, I shave my pubes. No, no, Okay. no. Let me ask the question. Damn. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Were you in, when you were in quarantine, did you let yourself Mm -hmm. go a little bit? No. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. But if you, listen, if you're like Jared and you took care of yourself, that's great. But if you weren't, and you let yourself go in 2020 during the quarantine. Yeah, you're not wrong. Manscaped is here for you to reboot, stay clean, and shaved in 2021. Manscaped is here to give you a fresh start in 2021 with their perfect package 3.0 that has all the right tools for the job. Come out of quarantine with clean balls thanks to the Lawnmower 3.0. This waterproof and skin-safe trimmer will reduce nicks to your two best friends or just whatever you're shaving. The third generation trimmer even has a light to give you the glow up you need in 2021. It's also time to freshen up down there this year with the crop preserver, which is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on those armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Yes, they do stink. And for on the go freshness, you'll love, and I mean, love the crop reviver ball toner spray. 2020 was just plain awful. So make sure your boys are refreshed and ready for new beginnings in 2021. Manscaped has even thrown in their shed travel bag to keep all their goodies stored comfortably. And speaking of comfort, the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs are also included in our hands down the best underwear that you will ever wear. A guy with hairy balls is like the year 2020. Don't be that guy. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code LLP at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code LLP at manscaped.com. One final time, 20% off with free shipping, manscaped.com. Use the promo code LLB and happy new year to your balls. As always, we want to thank our sponsors at Manscaped. They have been great friends of the program and we are renewed with them through March. So shout out to us for actually keeping the sponsor on despite my horrible ad reads. So it is what it is. I thought it was great. Yeah, Mm -hmm. nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I feel feel pretty good about myself now. (laughs) Yeah. They probably they probably saw 100 episodes and were like, of course we're going to resign. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. They, there was something they saw in us. They're like, oh, that kid, he, he tries. He tries really hard. We'll give him a chance, maybe. So, all right. He's but, awfully hairy. 
Shut up, Dallas. Anyways, moving on. So that's his girlfriend. Uh, no, let's not. Anyways, powder. Um, so my question to everybody, let me see here. We have eight people, seven of them being Red Sox fans and an Oakland A's fan. Respect. What do we realistically think this Red Sox 2021 record is going to be? Now, obviously, they need How to be far more below moves. 500. Is that what you're asking? Um, no, Dallas. As a matter of fact, I'm asking how averagely mediocre they could be. But I know they haven't made all their moves yet. You know, there could be a surprise trade. You know, we've talked about it a lot. I know Jared's talked about it on Section 10. You guys have talked about it on Starting Nine. Where do we think this Red Sox team could realistically end up? Let's just say, for the sake of just the argument, no more moves were made at all. There were no more moves made. <laughs> no more signings, no more trades. I know. It's it's That'd frightening. Bad. It, it's, it's frightening. But, like I said, we have a lot of baseball minds here, a lot of knowledgeable baseball minds. So the person I want to start with, I'm going to start with actually Chris Cotillo. I want to start with you. All right. Um, I think the ceiling, I, I, I have to throw out the not making any more moves part because there's a 0% chance with, with the roster they have currently constructed that they'd win. 75 oh, no. games so i mean i think you know the ceiling is that 2013 team that quick turnaround where you get a bunch of veterans on kind of prove it one year short-term deals and they all play you know really well and you're able to i, I mean 97 games in the world series obviously you know a high bar but we saw it happen before um so i, I think they're going to sign a lot more in the hunter renfro and, and reese types where short-term guys on one-year deals but i also think there's a possibility they'll go and get you know, Luis Castillo or Blake Snell or something like that if Tampa wants to make a deal with them. So um, I know Jared thinks they're going to be aggressive. They're going to be in on everybody. So I, I don't know about that. I think it's he, more about he, – He's not the only one. He's not the only one with that. But they're, state, they're not going to sign a free agent with a qualifying offer attached. So that eliminates, That's like, true. the top eight. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think they're at their best, barring a miracle like 2013, if they add a lot of pitching, if they add, say, an Odorizzi and a Kluber who pitches well – they're in the mix for a wild card spot. You know, I think okay. they're, they're probably, there's two teams far in a way above them in the division. Like I said, I think the Blue Jays as of right now are above them too. Um, and especially if the season shortened again, you have to play a lot more divisional games. I mean, people don't think about that, but that hurts. You know, last year you have to go up against a larger percentage of your divisional games and you have the Yankees and the Rays that the Red Sox have played horribly against for the last couple of years. And that happens again. I mean, that, that does hurt them. Um, so, so is it is it your assertion that the Red Sox are just slightly better than the Baltimore Orioles at this point? Um, I think they are still better, but they finished below them in 2020. So um, yeah. I think nobody really knows what you're going to get out of the Orioles too, because they showed some flashes. Um, but I still think they're, they're a long ways away. And they've said they're not going to be adding really. They're still looking at the track. So I think it's hard to put them uh, below them personally. But. All right, let's let's go to Fee, then we'll go to Gilly, then we'll go to Lauren, and then we'll round it out. So, Fee, let's go to you next. Um, I think they're going to be better than last year. I, that's I think they're going to be a lot better than last year. Um, it, it does depend on what moves they're going to make this off season. I I kind of agree with Jared. I think they're going to be very aggressive uh, this off season, and whenever it starts, it feels like a snail pace of where. It, and that's another problem with the game is that this is a prime opportunity that hot. I I look forward to hot stove like December, like before the first week of December to around Christmas time, all these signings, these trades and nothing. <laughs> and it's kind of, you, did you, you missed the Matt and Reese move today. Mm. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a good move, but it's not a, a needle. It's, it's depth. I mean, yeah. the, but the question they're going to have is you got, they still don't know really a timetable with sale. It seems like um, from the comments from Cora and Bloom that Erod is going to be on schedule to start uh, the season on time, which is a good thing. So, I mean, I expect more moves, but they're definitely going to be better than last year. But I mean, Chris messaged it earlier. Are the Blue Jays better than you? Because the Blue Jays sign a DJ Lily Mayhew or a George Springer. They got a lot better, and they have a young core. I mean, the Yankees, uh, they're, they're better than you at this point, and barely, but <laughs> to Jared's point. Uh, mm. But uh, there's just 
how better can you get? But they are going to be better. They'll probably be in the playoff mix, but they'll probably fade at the end. Which is Ooh. Fun. Ooh. Probably. I think they'll I think they'll win more than twenty four games they won last year. You you would hope you would hope. Yeah. But by, by yeah. the way, for any yeah, uh, I mean, probably because I'm just by virtue of playing more games, I would yeah. say you're correct. Yeah, I'd say that's a that's a solid <laughs> bet. By the way, for by the way, for anybody who cares about basketball, real quick, the Milwaukee Bucks are up thirty one to twenty five in the Celtics in the first quarter right now. Opening game tonight, go Celtics. Uh, let's go to Gilly. So. You know what? I appreciate Fiesta's optimism. However, I am not as bullish on the Red Sox this season, um, especially with the bullpen, man. I, unless uh, they really shape up that bullpen, and I guess uh, even um, they've been in talks with certain certain guys and at least being in the mix. But as of right now, if you had to start the season with Matt Barnes as your closer, I, you know what? Matt Barnes seems like a great guy and a good um, reliever to have in a pen, but not not your go-to closer that you can expect to save 40 plus games in a season um, that you'd want from an, an actual playoff team. So I, that bullpen is what scares me first and foremost. I think Darwin's in Hernandez. I, that's kind of a guy that they might groom to be the next closer. So I'm excited to see what they have in him. But other than that, to the pitching in general is going to be a mess, especially I, again, with Erod, I think it's optimistic to, to think he's going to be ready for the start of the season. I'm almost thinking that maybe he's first quarter of the season is when I expect him to be back sort of, but um, I don't know. This doesn't look like a playoff team. And if everything goes perfectly, maybe we're in the mix for a wild card, but I think we're going to be, we might be selling and even guys like Christian Vasquez, Ben Intendi, if he bounces back, I think they could be uh, um, headed out the door. Um, if we can cash out. Oh. Bait. 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 Yeah. You're taking yeah, the bait, no, trade apparently. Bait. Or trade bait. <laughs> trade bait. Trade bait. I like it. No, because, I mean, even the outfield. Think about the outfield. That's kind of a a weird um, um, kind of in, in limbo right now, right? I don't – I kind of hope they bring JBJ back in all honesty because I'm a JBJ fan. However, um, you don't want to overpay him. And then maybe Renfro and Ben Benintendi kind of have a platoon thing going on. I don't know. There, there's a lot up in the air, a lot more moves to be made. But – um. I, I'm not. I'm not feeling great about this current uh, roster. All right, Lauren. Yeah, I, I think pretty much everyone else already said what I was going to say. Um, I think they're right now, December twenty third, a wild card team. I think there's some more moves to be made to improve this roster. I do think they'll be better than last year. I think there's optimism and reason to believe they'll be better than last year. But right now, um, I'm just kind of feeling a little indifferent. Um, I, I always have high hopes for them. This has been my team for my whole entire life. And I always want them to obviously do well. And I will torture myself with 162 games if they're, they were just as bad as last season. But right now, it's, I don't see them doing, being more than a wild card team at this very moment. I hope that changes. I hope there are moves. They obviously need some more pitching. They need another outfielder so there's there's moves to be made it's just a matter of if that will happen and who they get to fill those roles can, can i ask can i ask you guys how you feel collectively and maybe lauren you can hit on this uh about folks from the front office departing like how i feel all? how i feel about it yeah like like um because this is what this is year two for heim correct mm -hmm. yeah uh mm -hmm. and what he's lost now two members of his cabinet is that correct think too who's the other, who's the yeah. other one uh zach went to the mets today too yeah but who's the other one other than him oh because porter didn't come directly from the red sox he was just from the red sox coaching tree right yeah oh, okay well then yeah yeah, yeah so fuck you oh, dallas oh, oh 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 yeah but folks yeah, that are take a seat folks that obviously have had a part in or we're going to have a part in what the future looks like you're not happy with being a 500 club Nobody there is happy with rooting or, or okay with rooting for a 500 club. Nobody wants to cover a 500 club or a sub 500 I do. club. I uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually Same. great. <laughs> so, so with all Sounds that. October, October off, Dallas. October off. Hey, I, I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but is there like, is there any apprehension or is there any unease about the future with little stuff like that happening? Because the roster and what it looks like, these are the folks who are in charge of that. These are the folks who have a big impact on that. 
And so when you're talking about the players, when you're talking about just being this sort of team right now, well, I think about the folks who are in charge of shaping that team. And I'm not, you know, I am just poking the bear here when I say they're flying out of the door to seek greener pastures. But, is is uh, that a shot at the Bruins there, Dallas, poking the bear? <laughs> really? That's just not nice. I'm not that good. I'm not that good. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, what, are you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't feel... I, 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 go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't feel like any like negativity toward it. I am big. If you want to further your career, no matter where you're at, go and do it. Um, I don't, I mean, obviously losing people in the front office sucks and it's, I just don't feel the impact will be huge. Like if they, if they overhaul the front office, that's one thing, but when you're just losing, I don't want to say minor people, but you know, you're not losing the GM, you're not losing high and bloom. Um, I am all for employees. Is that, is that a, is that a <laughs> phrase that we're comfortable <laughs> with using? I guess that's a better, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I want people to further their careers. Um, I don't think it's uh, in any negativity toward Haim. I don't think there's anything there that for Red Sox fans to worry like, oh, is Haim just destroying this team? Is he not, like, can he's, can people not work under him? I don't think that's anything to do with that. Uh, I just think it's a matter of somebody seeing an opportunity to further their career and maybe be uh, have a better opportunity at a, at a World Series sooner rather than later and just ran with it i think in, in today's case with zach scott i mean he he was the guy that was the runner-up to porter to be their gm and if you kind of read in between the lines it feels like cohen offered him a ton of money to come be an assistant and the red sox didn't stand in the way i don't think that's you know i know you're poking the bear but i just don't think it's an indictment on on the red sox and, and we're their own employees think about that my best well, never done right? that. He, he probably yeah. get a big raise. So. And I'm just thinking about windows too, you know, like, cause Davey Doms, what'd he just sign up for? Is it three years? Four for 20. Four for 20. Four for 20. That's a great combo. Um, But yeah, <laughs> like you're thinking about a window, like, so Heim would be halfway through Dombrowski's deal after this year. And he'd still be trying to piece together a front office to work with him. And I just would wonder how fans of a team who fancies themselves competitors year in and year out feels about that. That's all. Okay. Powder, any additional thoughts, Jared, obviously you can jump in if you want uh, anybody else feel free. I just, if the Luis Castillo, like the Reds kind of like Dallas and Jared, I know I listened to star nine today. If the fire sale is true with the Reds, like can the Red Sox actually get in on a Lu- Luis Castillo and get a picture of his quality um, then I think the Red Sox can improve a ton if they add to that pitching. I think their offense is fine, but like everybody said, kind of just I think they'll be like a 75 to 81 team if they don't add any more pitching to what they have now. But if they can get Luis Castillo and uh Oda Rizzi and someone like that, that definitely makes them into the wild card. Um, they can definitely be a wild card team with that, okay? Jared, any additional thoughts? I think they're gonna be good. Define good record. I mean, tell me how many games they're playing. 162. Well, that's not happening. If they played 162. 103 wins? 104? You're insane. <laughs> you are insane. This is- okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways. I mean, literally, literally, hey, just for the record, uh, everyone laughed at me when I said they were going to win 120 games, and then they won 119. So... Uh, I'm being conservative here. <laughs> yeah, with more yeah, talent. The team, was, the team was a little bit better. Uh, no, in it was your like opinion, a yeah. landslide. <laughs> yeah, in your opinion. It's a matter of opinion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. We're, we're yeah. just we're, Okay, fine. We're just going to leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> fine. All right. All right. Fine. Great. Great. Good. Awesome. Fantastic. Love it. Tremendous. Spectacular. Terrific. Touche. Oh, right. That's why I hated <laughs> Saugus people. <laughs> did you right see? Uh, did you see that story that came out today? Uh, David Pasternak gave his uh, his car that he won at the All Star Game to a nurse. Yeah. yeah that's all she that. went to Saugus High. Yeah, lovely I know girl. Her, I know who you're talking about too. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's uh, <laughs> she uh, she got a free car. Um, I thought that was very nice of David Pasternak to do that. That was. 
Yeah, and I'm not normally a hockey guy, but I did see so, that uh, on baseball the news. tavern legend David Pasternak, right? Oh boy. No, Tyler Sagan's a baseball tavern legend. I've seen I've seen I've seen Pasternak there like three times, and really? which is weird for Bruin, but yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've seen Sagan there a few times, and uh, he's you got to tip your cap. <laughs> this is true. Where's by the way? Where's Steve Peral tonight? Uh, I'll probably be in a bitch. He didn't answer my text, so. Oh, he's he painting, didn't. Wow. He's, he's painting shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Steve would be. Uh, Steve would be very upset. You know what? We should tell Steve. If Steve would have made this call tonight, mm-hmm. I would have given Steve a pair of Jordans, but he didn't answer. Mm-hmm. Um, because StockX, the company that I get some of my shoes from, mm-hmm. Same. screwed up and sent me uh extra pair Ooh. of the Jordans that just got released. Which ones? The oh, the white and black ones? The Jubilees. Yeah. Yeah. They mm. they sent me like to the point where my wife was like, You're lying. Let me see the StockX <clears throat> account. Let me see your account. Show me you didn't buy two of these, you liar. And I boom showed her and her she just she was like oh my god she put it together she grabbed the the order slips that come in the shoes and it's the exact same slip the exact same order number everything so they just fucked up and sent me a double order okay yeah but steve's missing out if he was here i know how much you like shoes yeah i would have been like steve bro man I can't, I've only got two feet. I can't wear four shoes. Mm-hmm. Fun f- fun fact: Steve was the first Section Ten co-host that we had on this podcast of the original three. Wow. So go figure that out. I'm still That's missing crazy. one. I know it was bananas. Coley doesn't. Coley is. Uh, he's an enigma. <laughs> okay. Touche. Yeah, he's kind of busy. Uh, you know, running a, a web some website, and he you know has a kid. I guess. I mean. Mm, yep. Yeah, I don't he's know. got a nine month old baby. And we're still missing one <laughs> Star Nine co-host. Yeah, yeah. We're, Jay missing, we're missing the J. Hey, I miss kid. him on starting Nine. Yeah, same. 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 All right. So here, here's one more question, and then anybody else, feel free to please throw their questions out there. Actually, first, Dallas, give us a quick A's uh, overview for this year, because I want to hear how the A's are going to look. Oh man, I'm not. I, I honestly, I legitimately can't tell you anything because I mean, we're out of show. Rotation very strong. Rotation yeah, very Frankie strong. Frankie Montas. Have you heard of him? Jesus Lazardo. He's throwing lightning bolts out of his hand. Like, we've got like Mike Fires too. He's pretty good. No, he's gone. Did Sean Manaya ever heard of him? No, yep. hit the Red Sox in 2018. Some offense that was. Yep. What's he got? So. So in a nutshell, the rotation, as I said, AJ Puck, how's he going to be this year? He will be strong to quite strong. All reports are extremely positive as far as his health, as far as the shoulder. Um, Yeah. That dude had it tough, man, because talking about a dude who like got to the big leagues and was told, all right, half of your repertoire gone. You can't use that right now. All right. But still go get outs in the big leagues very early on first go around. That was pretty tough. That's not comfortable. I've been in a spot like that, not at the point in his career that he was at, but later on and to have to do that, like I, I would feel just completely, I I would feel miniature. Like how do I, how do I get these outs? So he's overcome a lot. Um, Yeah, man, the bullpen that's been a strength of the A's is going to have, I, I think question marks just because is petite coming back. Are you going to be able to get a guy like him? That's a void that just I don't think a lot of people understand can can be easily filled. Um, the closer role, which everybody worries about, Liam Hendricks, he just had himself a hell of a year, hasn't had himself a hell of a few years. And so he's going to get money, and it's probably not going to be from the Oakland A's. But we're okay with that because we got a guy like <laughs> – if the next guy in line is a dude who only gave up one fucking run the entire season, you're probably okay with that. And that's who Jake Diekman is. And they've got other guys who, again, uh, Lou Trevino is only a, a year and a half or so removed from a ridiculous 2018 that he had with Blake Trinan. Blake Trinan obviously gone Dodgers, but these are guys that can step up. So for the A's, you don't have a shortstop, uh, but they've got guys that can absolutely pick it 
in the minor leagues that are going to be coming around. Um, you wonder if it's going to be a sacrifice of offense just to get that defense up there. That's something the A's have not been afraid to do in the past. Uh, that's why I mentioned the AL West being a division that could be interesting to watch because the Astros still have question marks. They still have holes, holes that need to be filled, will need to be filled, and there's not a lead dog really in that division as far as I'm concerned right now. Love that thorough A's report, Dallas. That's why they pay you the big bucks, Boom. or at least I hope they do. Boom. <clears throat> uh, Jared, I have a message for you, by the way. Um, my girlfriend says, tell Jared, I love him. Hashtag sexy with three Y's. So congratulations. I think you just stole my girlfriend from me. Congratulations. Damn, another one. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> now, we know what the 101st episode is going to be about. All right. Well, hey, Carabas, which, <laughs> gift, which gift basket do you want me to send this one? Is this with the poster on? <laughs> <laughs> does, your wife, does your wife like petunias? Does your girlfriend mm. like petunias, Al? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes, she does. Yeah, we'll put a sign tops Alan and Gil Alan Ginter in there too. All right, All right. Uh, six inch or eight inch uh, chocolate rocket pop. Al. <laughs> God, we'll get back. We, we, you hit me offline on that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm dead. All right. Oh wow. Um, yeah. Okay. Are those so hollow or solid? <laughs> oh, buddy. There's no biting through that one. You're gonna have to work it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Final question that I'm going to ask. And then what we do with all of our guests, usually at the end, and these, everybody knows the deal by now. We let them grill us with any questions they want, whether it's about the podcast, sports, whatever it is. We'll get into that in a sec. Dallas, I appreciate you being willing to talk about Boston sports as much. So thank you. Just want to, well, he's a Boston guy, Boston guy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Anyways. Well, if you listen to start nine, you know that. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah, yeah, starting not to be a Boston guy pretty soon. Hey, 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 Listen. Wrong show. I mean, that's. I, I mean, mean, but yeah. still, even so, still good. That's I mean, he'll still. You might as well have shown me a Chicks in the Office beanie. Well, <laughs> I mean, I have that downstairs. You want me to get it? I believe you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just, just wait for the just wait for the Mexican time shirt with a big flag. I mean, oh, and you do know that we're gonna put out that shirt, right? Yes. Like, no, can we get? Uh, I need a. Uh, I need a Catillo Libre shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Chris, we just we just want first dibs at it because we had you on here. We just want first dibs. That's all we. That's ask. fine. All right. I thank can't. You. Uh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Listen, we'll we'll advertise it on the show. It's all good. We'll give you some love. It's all good. Good. Um, we got you. Yeah, covered. I mean that's definitely like we we've been putting out like limited edition section ten shirts and uh, the Mexican Times t-shirt is gonna be yeah. it's gonna be great i think i have more section 10 shirts than i'd like to admit that's the yeah, sad part they're good they're good shirts i mean the, the limited I mean, edition drops are. are where it's at you get people all excited about a shirt that they won't be able to buy in three weeks and they <laughs> the go crazy logo. i actually yeah. i actually know uh powder you'd like this courtney actually got me a starting nine t-shirt so i'm trying to spread the wealth a little bit you know yeah. it, it, there's only so much time Dallas has kids to feed Great. Okay, I believe okay. Uh, I believe Court did Courtney also pick up that limited edition scratch and sniff jock strap that you were selling, Jared? <laughs> oh. oh, leave hey. her out! Leave her out of this. She didn't do anything. Yeah, she seems great. She is. You've met her. That's the that's the best part. Where did I meet her at? Uh, winter weekend. Uh, Fenway Park. Uh, at Fenway. Fenway Friday. Got it. I you was were probably like, inebriated. You are. You were like th this is the exact encounter. No, no, no. This was the exact encounter. We go up and say hi. I introduce her. Jared just goes, you're dating him? <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And then he's like, no, no, it gets better. He's like, he's great. He's from Saugus. He's oh. great. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go uh, crawl in the hole over there. I'm going to crawl in the sewer and I'm going to, you know, leave, you know? So yeah, that was great. That was fun. Good time. Oh my hell. How do you how do you not open hand slap him across the face? <laughs> because I like because I like actually like living in the free world and not trying to go to jail for Jared Carabas. No offense, Jared. None taken. I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh that was quite the night. And then the funny part is she's like, Oh, he's so nice. He's not mm -hmm. like how I thought he was. Yeah. So I was no, like, he, oh. he's, wor he's worse than what you think he oh. is. No, 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 no. Catillo, uh, no, this is great. Because she's like, because then she was like, oh, you know, how, how, I, that's not how I pictured him to be. 
I'm like, okay, how did you picture him? And then she was just all of a sudden, just not even hesitation, like, uh, no, not taller. I, I could have said that, but no, mm. I think it was some, oh, now I forget what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I'll text her and find out later and tell you off air, but that was quite a night. But anyways, Red Sox. It was lovely meeting her. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I can tell. Yeah, I was oh, just thinking oh, about it the Courtney, other day. How much oh, I enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, Courtney, how you doing, baby? Oh, I miss yeah. you so much. Does oh. she DM the show sometimes or no? No. Oh, so you should tell her to DM the show. I'll tell oh. her to do it. I'll Down tell her the to DMs. Do it. I'll yeah, tell well, her to do it. Right? That, sounds, that sounds like code. Uh, I, I, I've, got a, uh, I've got a request. Mm-hmm. No. Thomas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Next time we convene, I need a sign in your background that reads the powder room. Mm. <laughs> I like right. that. I, I want to say, Dallas, I think that there's um, – <laughs> I know this because I've looked. Uh, there's a website where you can get, like, custom whatever you want, like neon signs, because I was going to get the launching pad for when you walk into my apartment <laughs> to just have that hanging on the first wall that you see yes, when you sir. walk in. Um, so you should get one that says the powder room. All yeah. right. I do like that. Powder. That's that, that'll, be your, uh, that'll be your bonus present powder for producing a great show. We'll get Ooh. you that. Boom. Done. We'll that should happen. We got, we got you covered. All right. Red Sox, one signing you want to actually see them do. For me, it's Corey Kluber. Anybody else? Um, hmm. Realistic, keep in mind. Probably like Willie Mopena. He's definitely still like, he's definitely oh. available. That's I cried terrible. the day they traded for William L. Payne because Bronson Royal was my favorite player back in the day. Can I be yeah. realistic? How do you not re-sign Brock Holt? Yes. Agreed. Well, you're not competing. Just do no. the fans a favor. What if there's no fans? Then you're just going to watch them on TV and that's going to yes. do it. Yes, be appease the fans at home. They'll be tied to them. Can a trade work? Or does it have to be signing? Ow. Ow. Ow, it's your <laughs> show, man. <laughs> what? Jared, I'm trying to get another fan. Listen, I'm trying to get another fan. Yeah. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> All right. Somebody else, somebody else answer the question for me. I got stuff. I feel like this is a question that can only be answered by you. This yeah. is... Why? Why you, you're you're making the rules, Al. <laughs> I said, can a trade work or is it only a signing? Oh, it, oh, sorry. I thought you were talking like to one of the other guys. A trade is fine. Then Luis Castillo, get him. Okay. The, the old second baseman from the Marlins or the Reds guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have uh, Matt Chapman, and then you can move um, you can move Rafael Devers over to first base, and it it definitely it solves a a number of issues that you would have moving forward from like a lineup standpoint. Hey, hey, easy, pal. You guys just got a manager a little while ago. Okay? Yeah. Don't, <laughs> go, go, don't go getting crazy. It's going to be a few years before. All right. who, who else? I want to hear other names. Uh, I'll be different. Uh, give me Blake Snow. Give me him. Mm-hmm. Give, me, give me an ace. Give me that slap dick. <laughs> How quickly would those shirts be on sale? Uh, the day of. The yeah. day of. Immediately. Yeah immediately i mean i honestly want to put out a t-shirt that just says slap dick on it i'll yeah. buy it <laughs> um jerry Carabas, please check the section 10 dms thank you um next okay i think that's more steve but i'll i'll see if i can get the information um you're gonna want to believe me all right just just trust me <laughs> okay <laughs> no really trust him Jerry. no do it no no but actually like but like it. actually do it now Yes, because you will like it. All right, let's see. Let's see. Are we talking Twitter or are we talking Instagram? Twitter. Twitter. Okay. <clears throat> and while Jared's doing that, anybody else want to throw a name out there? Just someone who's nice to the, to the wonderful beat writers. That's all I want. Okay, I don't care how good he is. <laughs> okay. As long as they're nice. It, it makes yeah. a huge difference when they're nice. Sure? They, they want to answer a thousand percent. To you. How, how did you guys uh, – l- let me ask you guys this. Covering a large market team, um, not having the access that you would typically have or just being around to, to garner the access that you would get, even, you know, sometimes maybe you just happen upon it. Um, 
do you find it or did you find it any more difficult to connect with your fan base or deliver the messages or the stories that you wanted to, that you felt needed to, was there any hurdles aside from like the obvious that you're not fucking there um, that you were like, you know what? Damn. This is really, this is really different just because of X, Y, or Z Lauren, anything. Yeah. Chris, I don't know if you feel this way, but I felt we had a ton of access to players in coaches and the staff, I thought um, they did a really good job with getting us access pre and post game, um, any other media availabilities. And I think that helped everyone do their job a little easier. It went a little smooth. Well, it went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to go. Um, and the same thing was the Bruins. I primarily covered the Bruins while the Red Sox were on and it was same thing, just very, very accessible. Um, I thought it went I thought it was better in some aspects where they made more players available. I don't know if it's because it, that was easier um, being on zoom or whatever, but yeah. I personally felt that they did really well and that we had really, really good access to, to everybody. Yeah. I just think, I mean, there's a couple of things. Number one, uh, be as competitive and with as many people, like it's hard enough to try to stand out and get something that nobody else is getting or get a good store. And you do that through one-on-ones or pulling a guy aside. I mean, you know, or it's obviously Dallas, but with that, I mean, in a group setting, there was no one-on-ones at all, basically right. all year. Like you were supposed to set it up if you wanted to, but it's a huge pain in the ass to go through the, hey, can you have a player come in and sit down, you know, just for me and guys were denying it. And so there was no way to stand out. Uh, the other thing is, you know, guys could, because everything was through PR, could just duck us for as long as they wanted to. So, um, you know, if a guy was struggling for the whole year and there's a couple kind of obvious cases there, um, I mean, we, we didn't hear from, for example, JD for like six weeks at a time. You know, that would never happen in the regular season because you're going to run into him in the clubhouse at some point. Um, right. So that's, I mean, that's the big fear for me is like if they decide to limit access when things go back to normal because the players obviously are going to like it this way. I mean, the coverage is going to be way worse. So that's something I think could happen, but I hope it doesn't. I mean, guys, Anybody- guys, the guys don't understand. I mean, the players today, I think Brian Johnson went on a podcast and was saying like 95% of the players like would want less access than we get in Dallas. I'm sure that you would agree that that's probably the consensus, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that it's, we're also at a time where it's interesting where the, that mindset could be potentially dying off. I, I think that mindset is a little um, outdated. And the reason I think that is because we do have, like, we have guys who don't want to talk to the media at all still in the game. That guy could very well be a teammate of a dude who comes with his own media company. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case 10 years ago. Okay. So knowing that there's going to be a shift in the collective approach or the collective thought to media access because there's a lot of guys that jared and i talk to and jared and i interview one that already consume our content and we had no idea and so then getting the access via a zoom or whatever is almost second nature to them because that's how shit is gone for the most part and so if that's how access is going to be granted or gone about then they're going to be open to that, it, it feels like. But to your point, on a beat trying to stand out, figuring out that this dude, you know, and I'll use uh, Glass now for an example, figuring out that this dude's like yelling at Martin Scraley for whatever into his mind, yeah. into his glove before he goes out. To, you need to be able to just tap him on the shoulder and, and get that, right? That's not coming right. out on a Zoom call. So, uh, but but yeah, no, I'm, I I. I can agree with you in your assessment that the clubhouse for the most part is like, yo, beat it. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully we get back in. I don't obviously probably not at the beginning of 21, but maybe by the end of it. Yeah. So I I was just curious because I know, because I do as a, as a former player, I know how important that access is because all it takes is just asking that question and you can get the answer, but you got to be there to be able to do that. Right. So we're, we're wrapping up pretty much. We're going to wrap up very soon. 
questions that the guests have for the hosts. Anything they want to ask at all. Now is your time. Uh, Al, when did you give up on on just trying to fight the dad bod? Um, I gave up probably about uh, six months ago. I said, you know what? I'm just, I'm done trying to keep this, you know, trying to take this weight off. I'm done trying to, you know, I'm just embracing who I am, Dallas. Good. And that is the dad bod all the way. You know, my students make fun of me sometimes, but that's okay. You I know, can only I, see you from the nipples up. That's okay. It's okay. Like, I understand. I get it. it it's not any prettier below. So <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, that's uh, that's sort of, you know, the long-winded answer. Good. You know, six, six months. So. <laughs> Other have questions. We, have we put that degree to use, Fiesta? Well, I graduate in the um, spring. Oh, yeah. Shout out me for the memory. I yeah. feel like I've, gr I've grown with you guys, you know? Yeah. yeah. You, you have. You like have. it's two out of the three hosts have had to readjust their life because they can't figure their schedule out. And I just. <laughs> I mean, it's easier now because everything's virtual now. So <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is very true. Lauren, Jared, Chris, Gilly. Um, I don't have a question, but I have a really funny Dallas Breeden story. Oh, oh. I love to hear it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is a great story. Uh, come okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like five or six years ago, oh, when shit. you were working for Sunday Night Baseball, uh -huh. um, yeah. I was working as a production assistant for ESPN on the, on the Sunday Night Baseball broadcast. And whoever was supposed to pick you up was stuck somewhere doing another errand. So I had to pick you and Aaron Boone up at your hotel okay. in Boston. Okay. And so you guys get okay. it. Where's this going? You're very, very nice. And um, I'm did really I, did nervous. Did I sit in the front seat? No, you sat in the back. Okay. Um, I don't know if you were instructed to because both you and Aaron got in the back. So I don't know if that was like a thing. But no, we were probably just talking. <laughs> I, I was so nervous because I'm driving this like massive Suburban and I'm five foot two. So I'm trying to like, navigate everywhere and a traffic everywhere and i took this really really aggressive left turn and you were like cheering me on you're like oh you're definitely from boston if you're driving like this you're like can, can you drive us back because we'll definitely get back if you drive us back to the hotel <laughs> and so i i dropped you guys off in the compound and i'm going to park the car at the cvs uh right next to fenway and a phone starts ringing and i was like what the hell like that's not my phone you left your phone and the and your credentials in the back seat and it was Aaron calling you. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I should pick up. Like, that's not like, I don't know. So I'm like running back. She to the still car. has your phone. Right <laughs> <now>. Yeah. <laughs> you I do. That, that's where it went. And uh, I ran it back to you and you were like, oh, thanks, best friend. So like, we've been best friends for a couple of years now. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you. Why don't you write anymore? <laughs> thank you very much. That is, that is, I, I, uh, I have, I have probably, I have made like three to four very close Uber friends because they've like come back. And I, and I, and I mean that like, cause they've brought the phone back and you know what that feels like <clears throat> must be you know nice. what to get. Oh my God. It is like, there's no other feeling like that is a shot of dopamine that I just, I need that, that, that is, you can't get that anywhere. Did Thank your laptop get <laughs> stolen? Jared? Yes. I left my backpack in the backseat of an Uber in New York city, had my phone, laptop uh like ipad like everything everything was in that bag gone never returned yeah that's that's just terrible mm -hmm. that's pretty bad but i was i was polite that's good to know stolen for me hmm? oh yeah didn't someone steal your laptop, laptop from, out of the press box at the all-star game yeah oh. yeah yeah who steals a laptop from the press box? Well, how do you not have video footage of that like a half hour after you've decided that it's been stolen the Cleveland uh, baseball team, the future Spiders, were not uh, not too helpful. Yeah, I can see that. Wow. I can see that. Uh, Gilly, Chris, Jared, anything? I got nothing. Be whatever you want. Anything. What do you guys have planned for 2021? What's what, what do you got cooking up next? We we got a bit. Not you. <laughs> not you. We, 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 we got, we got a guest coming next week. We got a pretty big yeah. guest coming. I know it's still 2020, but that'll be a good lead into 2021. Hopefully more, uh, more big guests down the line. So we'll see, we'll see what we'll happens. We'll just say it's active baseball player. That's the only yes. hint we'll give. Yep. Oh, that's, that's it. It's, it's, it's going to be good. Pablo Sandoval. <laughs> Tell me no. it's Pablo. No, <laughs> come on. No, 
<laughs> no, that's he's not that's, hated that's, by Jared. No, he's it, pop, not, still not doing second either. time next week. <laughs> oh, I'd love to have him on. Uh, oh, this man. close, I, I was this close to, to getting an auction for Jared. I I, I bid on a uh, baseball lesson, a hitting lesson. It was a Pablo. hitting lesson with Pablo. A, a hitting Dallas. lesson on or how to break your belt. No, a hitting yeah. lesson. I got out. A hitting lesson, and Dallas bid on it. And if he won it, he was going to give it to me to just show up to see Pablo. <laughs> Uh, and I would have loved to have done it. I really would have. I would have. Uh, I think someday we'll cross paths. I mean, knowing him, I don't think he he's going to get the joke, mostly because I'm not joking. Um, <laughs> but it, I don't think that he would find the humor in it at all. Um, but I feel like that that meeting has to happen sometime within like the next five years. You, you would think. I think after he after he retires, after he finally eats his way out of the game once and for all, I think he'll become more accessible because <laughs> he's like an egomaniac narcissist that is going to be doing like he'll he'll go back to San Francisco and he'll do all like the I mean he's part of like the World Series teams so and he'll do all like the anniversary signings like he'll be very easily uh, traceable. I think we'll be able to like track him down somewhere Just and we autograph we, signing. Yeah. Yeah. Like some sort of like, yeah, it's the, it's the 10 year reunion of the 2012 world series champs. Like he, he'll be there for that. No doubt. All right. L let's give, let's give one, everybody one bold take for 2021 and then we'll wrap this up powder. One bold take. Like I said, my last article, the Padres couldn't win the world series if they signed another pitcher to be very bold, but. Okay. All right. Fee. Bold. And it can be any sport. It doesn't have to just be baseball. It can be any sport. Uh, my bold take is that Derek Carr will be the New England Patriots starting quarterback week one, 2021. Ooh. Spicy. Lauren? Um, I don't know if this is super bold, but I don't think the Bruins will make the playoffs. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe it was a little bold. Dallas? Uh, Dallas. Yeah. Sox yeah. sub 500, probably not too bold. Um, and also, Yo. that's just that's just a... And then um, I'm going to say fans, 20% capacity post-All-Star break. Okay. Chris? Uh, Patriots tank on purpose to try to get the first overall pick and take 2021 Heisman winner Sam Howell with the first overall pick. Wow. Damn. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Gilly? Obviously the quarterback at the University of North Carolina right now. Of course, because you're a Tar Heels guy. We understand that. Yeah. Hey, he's got, got a big bowl game coming up against A&M. That'll be good. I'm excited. Yeah, they only had all, our top three players opted out, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gilly. Um, it's early in 2021, so I'll, you'll have to circle back later on. But I think that the the Bills are going to win the Super Bowl. I really do. I'm all in. All in on the Bills. Bills, Bills Mafia. Jerry. Yep. Um, <clears throat> a bold take. Yes. I feel like all my takes are bold. Uh, yeah. 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 That's true. Um. I've Boston got Trevor Red Bauer. World Series. No, 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 that's not bold. Um, yeah, yes, it is. I've got Trevor Bauer signing with the Marlins. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. And my bold, my bold take: the only sport the that Miami one. The Miami team. <laughs> that Miami team. My bold take: only sport that hasn't been mentioned yet: basketball. The Boston Celtics are going to make it to the NBA Finals. That's my bold take. Uh, Bronny foregoes his next two years of high school and signs a 10 day contract with the Lakers just <laughs> before playoffs start. And he and his father become the first father son duo to win an NBA championship. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, love it. I got him and Delonte West won one together. <laughs> and on that note, that gone. is wow. that, that's wow. that's where I think that's where we're gonna cut it off. See, you can't say shit like that out here in LA and be and, and walk the street around folks like you can't do that. <laughs> this was an epic 100th episode. Here's to hopefully a hundred more. Thank you to everybody that's been with us along the way. 
anybody that's listened, Couch Guy Sports for bringing us on when we needed to find a permanent home. Obviously, Manscaped for partnering with us, 20% off and free shipping with code LLP. CouchGuysports.com. Go check all that out. Couch Guy Sports, CouchGuysports.com dash shop. Go find all your merch for Couch Guy Sports on there. If nothing else for episode 100, we have in order on my screen, Tom Powder Cadmus, Tom Satham Facet, you may know him as Fiesta, Lauren Campbell, Dallas Braden, Chris Catillo, Mike Gilligan, Jared Carabas. I'm your host, Alan Nahigian. Thank you for listening to episode 100, and we'll see you next week for episode 101. Santa, baby. Yes, sir. And...